Hello, I'm Dr. Brian McDonough. Today I want to take on a very difficult topic. It's kind of the elephant in the room, and it's such an elephant in the room that you won't even see this conversation on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, network coverage. Most people haven't taken it on because it's really hot and it's very controversial. The value since the beginning of doing my podcast, Coronavirus Today, and doing these videos for me has been that I don't take sponsors. I don't want any money out of this. This is purely for informational purposes. I'm at the point in my life where I can do that. And I think it's a point which makes at least what I'm saying uh, as objective as it can possibly be based on experience and the training I have. So a bit of perspective. I'm trained as a family doctor. So I'm always worrying about things a month, two months, years ahead of time. In order to do things right for my patients, I need to be thinking about what prolonged blood pressure being elevated can do, uh, what poor diet can do, and, and try to take what we've learned from others and use that to try to predict the future for people, kind of like a financial planner, but for people's bodies. So when I look at COVID, I've been looking at it from the very beginning, what we can do and how we can take this fairly predictable virus and anticipate how to protect. That's why early on, talking about washing hands, wearing masks, social distancing, all these things made so much sense. And we talked about how there would be mutations and changes and irresponsible behavior by some would lead to uh, results in others. And if you really think about it, it's so true. We are tied together as a global society. I mean, what happens in one country can lead to a mutation which can rapidly come to the rest of the world. What happens by your family member, neighbor, or coworkers' irresponsibility about maybe, let's say, not wearing a mask or coming to work with symptoms of COVID can lead to you directly being impacted. I mean, you know how it works, and we're seeing that. So we're all tied in together. And that brings in the topic of vaccines and the question that I don't have the answer for, but we need to start talking about. Right now, we're in the early stages. And there are those who want to get the vaccine and those who don't. Even in healthcare environments, we're seeing maybe 60 or 70% at best want the vaccine. And there's a 30% group that, for whatever reason, don't want it. And there are many reasons to look at. For instance, if you look at the history of our country, there have been people, definitely certain groups, that have fallen prey to trusting leaders and scientists and being taken advantage of and used more or less as experimental guinea pigs. And that stuff is hard to get out of people's memory. There are others who just, by their very nature, worry about things like microchips being in a vaccine and being a, a great way to track down people. I mean, there, there's all sorts of theories out there. And there are people who just don't want anything in their body that isn't, as they see, natural. So everyone has their opinions on these things. I've already made my opinion clear because I know how aggressive this virus is and I've seen what it's done to now approaching a half a million people, basically costing it a life every minute. So I'm looking at that saying, well, even if the vaccine's not perfect, it's a heck of a lot better than the alternative. And that's where I made the judgment for myself and I've advised my patients. And at this point, I'm advising my patients they should do what they want. So this is where the question comes up with that big prelude. Think about it. I'm telling people now when they get their vaccine that they should continue wearing masks. The biggest reason I'm saying to continue wearing masks is to protect other people. Yes, it is quite possible, 94, 95% effectiveness that you could get COVID. But we even know if you get COVID, it's going to be less severe of a case in the vast majority. So the percentages are with us once we're vaccinated. Uh, but we also know that those neighbors, those people we care about, if you're not wearing a vaccine, excuse me, you're not wearing a mask and they haven't been vaccinated, they could be exposed to the virus. So what we're asking people to do, and I think a vast majority of people are, is to continue wearing masks, not as much for yourself, but for others. All right, so we have that premise and that's what we're doing. Here's the question that no one's looking at that we have to look at. And the answer, I really don't know, it's gonna to have to be discussed. Let's say we get to that point where we're 60, 70, maybe 80% vaccinated and we're getting that virus down. At what point do we stop wearing masks once we've been vaccinated out of courtesy 
for those who haven't been vaccinated? And what is the ethical and moral obligation to continue living life wearing masks when we don't want to wear them anymore? Because let's face it, nobody really wants to wear a mask. We're doing it to protect others and to protect ourselves. I mean, that's been the issue all along. Some people just don't believe it or don't want to, whatever. But the reality is we need it now. But at a certain point, those we care about, others, at least we know of, who have been vaccinated, will put us in a position where we don't need to wear masks. But if we don't, the people who have chosen not to get vaccines could still have terrible reactions and they could die probably at no different rate than if they died before. In fact, we may have mutated strains. So the question becomes, what do we do? What do we tell everybody they have to be vaccinated and it's mandatory to try to get COVID kind of under control in five, six, 10 years? Do we tell them you have the right not to be vaccinated, but you could die and just kind of turn the other way? I don't have the answer, but I'm telling you the future, the science, and what this is saying. We are going to have to grapple with this concept. So if you're someone who hasn't gotten in a vaccine, you got to think about that yourself. Do you want to be kind of on the outside at risk for an extended period of time? Are you willing to take that on? especially when others may ultimately choose not to worry about you. Ethical questions, medical concerns, it all kind of comes together as a global society. We're going to have to look at that and we're going to have to figure out how we deal with this virus in an ongoing fashion.